uh, please participants, you can uh, you can start asking uh, all our today's presenters and start the, the discussion with probably uh, Prof. Wage. He was uh, indicating that he has some questions to Abdo. So Prof. Wage, you can start. Uh, thank you. I have a question to our friend from Egypt who talked yes, about the uh, coronavirus yes, 19. Abdo. Okay. So uh, I am wondering if, if they have any tentative of fabrication of vaccine in their place. Because I see that now everywhere in, uh, in the US, in Europe, people are trying to, uh, to get a vaccine against COVID-19. And uh, this is why I am asking a question if they are working on some vaccine also in Africa. Yes. So uh, the, uh, w working on vaccine is mainly uh, on the spike protein. Okay. Because the spike protein uh, uh, is the most, uh, I mean, exposed protein of the virus. So uh, 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 if you are working on a spike, you, you, your work should be work as a vaccine or uh, antiviral. So uh, in, um, for, for me, uh, working in Egypt at the uh, Biofields Department, I am working on different variants, including the spike protein. Uh, and uh, I am uh, suggesting that there is a host cell recognition, which is GRB78. So, I mean, uh, if I have some type of uh, inhibitor to this binding, okay, I will share my screen for maybe I can show something. Okay. So uh, if you are working with some uh, 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 some uh, host, uh, this is a spike, yes, this figure. Uh, if you can see here, the spike protein is the most uh, exposed protein. So if you are working on a spike, your work should, uh, can, can, uh, can, be, can be used uh, or develop a vaccine. Because as you can see here in this figure, I recognize here this region small region on the uh, coronavirus spike that can be targeted by antibodies uh, or uh, any peptide or any uh, uh, vaccine candidate that can be uh, used to interdict, contradict this uh, binding. So, I mean, uh, if you have some antibodies that uh, bind to this region, it will uh, uh, stop the, the recognition with the GRB78. So, I mean, uh, my work uh, in the spike, um, uh, it is uh, near, uh, I mean, it can, can be used to develop a vaccine. As I'm, uh, also I can uh, I see here that there is a cross vaccination between uh, coronavirus disease two or SARS-CoV-2 and uh, the immersive human coronavirus strains, which is uh, the first four strains here. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we can develop a vaccine from, uh, Low, uh, low infectivity viruses strain like uh, these are uh, first of all strains here. Do do you, do so, you have contact with some pharmaceutical company? Uh, no, for the vaccine development, no. But I have uh, some contact with other uh, um, other protein, which is uh, I mean uh, the, the, it is not not hostile, not not hostile recognizing protein. So, uh, but, uh, but I want to say this is a computationally a computational work. So I, I don't have any verification, experimental verification of this work. Uh, and uh, sure, I need to collaborate with some people that are working experimentally on the spike uh, to test uh, these inhibitors or, or this cross vaccination probability or like this. Thank you. I wish I can, uh, yeah, I, I wish I could, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I wish, I, I wish I, uh, my reply is enough for, for your questions. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Any other question? Okay, Steve. I have a question yes. actually, Steve. 
Okay. So, uh, Steve, you know the code, the MCTDH code. There yes. is this MCTDH uh, hyphen X, which most of people on the ultra cold atoms use to actually to calculate the ground state and some dynamical uh, properties. Yeah. Is it similar? Are they on the same flavor or this, the code that you are presenting is different? So actually the people who develop the, the one that's developing the MCDH X code that you're talking about, did their PhD in Germany. Yes. So the code was initially developed in Germany in the theoretical chemistry lab. So they had the MCDH code and the first developed one is what is called MCTDH E for bosons. So one student who did this PhD then moved to Vienna and started developing MCTDHX from that MCTDHB. So it's the same core, it's the same uh, formalism at the bottom. The difference is that it's made to uh, study system in circumcontization and create uh, identical particle, but the formalism behind is the same MCTDH formalism that was uh, developed in 1990 more or less. So there's another version also that's called MCTDHF for fermions. There's the one for boson. The X is more or less a combination of bosons and fermions. But MCTDH is also able to do in some specific cases uh, identical particle treatment if you operate uh, conveniently on the different particles. So does it really work with, uh, for example, spontaneous quantum fluctuations? There was, uh, anyway, there was, you know, in, uh, in the quantum dynamics, if you take, for example, bosons, where you have uh, yes. condensation in a spin zero, and then after, if you let it to interact, you might have uh, excitations to plus one and minus one spin due to the short range interaction, yeah. or, uh, long range interactions. This is usually would lead to uh, what do you call it, uh, spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking. The spin one and the spin two might rotate completely in the opposite uh, direction. And this is somehow okay. missing on the MCTDH hash X, because when you propagate in the base of time dependent basis, the phase, which is dynamically also propagates, is somehow missing. So, um, what I can comment about this is clearly not my current field of interest, but what I know is that it's not something that is finished. So it's always a work, in, a work in progress. So I'm pretty sure if you email the people in that community, they may find an interest in solving those type of questions and maybe extending the code to, to address those specific issues. I do believe that the wave function, you, you have to define your wave function answers. So once you define that wave function answers, you, you can more or less decide how you run the dynamics and what you put in or, or doesn't put in. Yeah, okay, thank you. Just last, last, probably last question. Can you comment on how to get the potential surface? Okay, so if I, if I have to deal with a small system, I usually have to go with, um, as exact as possible I can. So I will go with this type of wave function based uh, methodology. If I were to study bigger molecule, I would either use DFT or maybe try to build some kind of model potential that I can easily manipulate. So it's the same strategy as what you do in every case, but the specificity on what I'm trying to do is making sure that in the end I get the potential that I can easily use for my dynamical um, calculation. If you take, for example, the case of the boson, you know very well what type of interaction is, and it's very easy to code inside the program. If you are dealing with a molecule because you have these uh, many particle interaction, you have to start separating those many particle interaction into maybe one more, two more interaction, and there are many ways of doing it. Uh, it all depends. The starting point is doing electronic structure calculation, describing your whole system, building a potential energy surface, and how you decide to interpolate it, it it's up to you at that point. The, okay. The best you do it for quantum dynamical code, the better it would be for um, running the dynamics later on. Yeah, okay, one last question on the chat from Stefani. 
is the method used in MCTDH registered in MRO? MRO, no, no, MRO. MRO is essentially for doing electronic structure calculation. So MCTDH is specifically meant for dynamics. So with MRO, for example, if you want to study a molecule, you can obtain the vibrational spectra, you can obtain the entire spectrum, but it's based on normal mode expansion of the system. If you empty get, you can go a little further than that. You can look at the dynamics, you can look at the product of the reaction. You can even study the interaction with light and uh, try to work on the quantum control. So there, there's a lot more possibilities that you can do on the different dynamics. More precisely meant specifically to look at the electronic structure problem. So that's the difference. You, you have different type of information and most of the time you on, on the two, two programs. So uh, Stephanie, please uh, unmute your mic to continue some of the questions that you posed, please. Okay, what, what, what I understood, if I follow your next question, what I understood by standard method, you, we have to solve the time dependence for the equation. So you can write your, serve your, your, the code yourself at home and just your launch code equation and just do a wave packet uh, propagation. That is straightforward. You don't have to use uh, anything sophisticated to, to arrive at the solution. But when you do MCT get you, uh, the equation are a lot more complicated. So because you have to have this basis that is evolving with time, you have to apply a variational principle, then you start having very complicated equation that you have to solve and implement in the code. So the standard method is probably something that you can code quite uh, easily yourself. This MCTD method, you can probably do it, but it will take you several months or years to be able to have something that is uh, perfectly working. Uh, okay, uh, please. Yeah. Do you have some questions to the other speakers too? Thank you, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve. Thanks. Uh, please, Ali. Okay, thanks, Garu. I have a question for uh, Stefan. Yeah. So, Stefan, I really enjoyed your talk, and I'm glad that you're moving into the water business finally. <laughs> um, so, uh, so one of the things you you showed was the um, that the uh, the waters are polarized near the interface. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but there are two points here. One is it seemed like your, the simulations that you have, you, you don't really have a bulk phase of water, right? Okay. It's just a layer, it's a monolayer. So, okay, one has to be very careful about understanding if those effects that you see are just an artifact uh, of having a monolayer. So that's number one. Number two, let's assume that that's not an artifact. Um, if there was this orientational polarization of uh, of water at, inter at the interface, you'd, this would have an implication on the fields uh, at the interface, and this could have a very important implication on chemistry, yes. right? Because these these fields are the things that will uh, drive chemical reactions. So, yeah, I was just wanted to get your perspectives on this. So, uh, you uh, you're, you're absolutely right because uh, electrocatalysis is also one of the main thing that we want to do. So we want to see how does the current drives reactions. This is actually the first thing we want to do. And then I have a question now. It's more a technical one. It's about how to, I mean, to to see this the impact of this electric field at the interface. I mean, technically, I'm not I will not see I'm not well equipped to address it. So this is why in our private chat, I, I was happy when you, you, you said that we could do something about it. So this is something that would be very important and relevant for us here. So what we plan to do concerning electrocatalysis was to move towards this NOSCOV approach, which is, I mean, actually best for metals and then gas phase molecules, right? If actually you, you go to oxide and then on top of this complex mechanism that oxide brings and on top of that you go to bulk water i don't know how to handle noskov mechanism there you see i don't know if one has to go and take snapshot of equilibrium snapshot of equilibrium snapshot of equilibrium let's say trajectories of the md and then average over it or i don't know but i really don't have an idea so i would be happy to have an expert like you to 
Well, I, I, I know nothing. Well, I know nothing about Norskov. <laughs> I mean, I know about it. Uh, but, but no, no, I, I, I know about the method. But um, uh, I, I think it, this is an interesting discussion to have with uh, also Nicola and Ralph yeah, yeah. because they they do this type of stuff. And uh, so yeah. Anyway, no thanks. We, we'll talk about this later, of course. Uh, I think we we can have one more, probably one more question. Uh, because uh, we are running out of time. We need to come back at, after one hour. Uh, so uh, just one last question, please. Okay, so I think uh, we have to close for probably now. I don't see hands or I don't see someone wants to ask on the chat. Uh, so we will, we will come back after one hour. Uh, we really thank you for all the speakers. It was a great pleasure to actually to listen to all of you. And I'm sure we will uh, continue the interaction and we will actually create, I mean, use this platform to continue our collaboration as well. So see you later, guys. Thank you, bye.